Here, I'm going to show you how to use VBA and macros to get user input. In this tutorial specifically, I'll show you how to use the message box in order to do that. Now, if you've watched the previous classes, you've seen me use the message box just to output stuff visually in a pop-up window in the spreadsheet. But here we're going to expand on that, and I'm going to show you how to add more buttons, different buttons, how to figure out which button the user clicked, how to change the appearance a little bit based on what you want the message box to represent. It's going to allow you to add logic to your macros that's controlled by the user in a nice little pop-up window. And this is part one. In part two, I'll show you how to use the user input box so the user can actually type in a value or even select cells within the worksheet and have that input into the macro. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. The first thing we're going to cover here is the message box. And if you've watched the previous classes, you've seen me use the message box to output values in the spreadsheet so that we can basically see what's going on in the macro. It's very helpful for that. And I'm going to start with going with a very basic one, and then I'll expand on that and show you all the cool things you can do with that first. So let's go to the VBA window, Alt F11, Insert, Module, let's create the macro sub message box. There we go. All right, so here's the very basic one. I'm going to put a bunch of comments on this basic message box pop up window. And you might hear me refer to it as either a message box or a pop up window because it's basically both of those. Simply MSG BOX space. And then let's put some text within double quotation marks. Hi there. Now we can go back to the worksheet, Alt F11, hit Alt F8 to choose the macros, run the macro, and we got a nice little box. Hi there. So that's the most basic, most standard way to have a little message box pop up. And you'll notice that once this has popped up, I cannot go out here and click any cells. Excel actually makes a very annoying little noise when you click out here. So let's hit OK or the red X up here to close this. Go back here. All right, so that's the very basic one. And for this tutorial also, I'm going to leave the examples in here in the sample workbook and just comment them out. So with a single quote, and as you may remember from the other classes, you just remove the quote and it's going to run that line of code. So here, now that message box will no longer run. Now let's make a more complex message box, msgbox, hit space, and this time instead of just typing the text, let's take a look at what we have down here. So we've got arguments, arguments for the function, the message box function, just like we have within the spreadsheet. So if you're typing, let's say, a VLOOKUP or a SUM, and you hit the open parentheses, which you could do in this case, but we're not going to, let's leave it off for now. But when you're in the spreadsheet and you start to type a function and hit the open parentheses, you see a list of the arguments that you can input for that function. And that's all this is down here. It's telling us what we can input for the message box. So this up here, this text hi there, is actually the prompt. But we can also choose the buttons that we want to show for the message box and actually a few things related to style. And we can change the title of the message box. So what appears up here in the window for it. You also have help file and context, but we're not going to talk about that here because if you are designing a help file for your little message box, then you're not watching this tutorial. <laughs> so let's go here again to fill out the first argument. Let's say hi again. Now it's his space. And we can go to the second argument. Now the second argument, I'm actually going to skip here, but that is the buttons argument, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's hit a comma. You can see it takes us to the second argument, and it gives us a list of all the options. But we don't want to do anything for this right now, so let's hit one more comma to get us to the title argument. So we just skipped this argument. We just left it empty. Now we're on the title argument, and double quotes, my title. Now let's hit Enter. Okay, it changes the formatting a bit. That kind of gives you the hint that we entered everything correctly. 
Now let's hit Alt F11, Alt F8, run the macro, and you can see we've got high again, and we have our title, my title. Hit OK, Alt F11. So now we're starting to build it out. But let's say you want to add some more buttons to it. So we can go here. And if you want to get the little options window, which is no longer there, just backspace over one comma, type the comma again, and it's going to pop up. Now let's choose the buttons that we want. So over here we have more than just button options, but let's start with the buttons at first. Scroll down here, and starting with VB OK Cancel, OK Only, and then Retry Cancel, we have the options. Let's go with a Yes, No, Cancel. And you can play around with this right here to see how to work it for your situation, but I'll also show you where to get more information about all these options in a moment. So let's click VB Yes, No, Cancel. You can also type in VBS no cancel, by the way, but it's easier to select it from the drop down, no misspellings. So I'm going to hit the run button up here to make it go quicker. Now we've got hi again, my title, and yes, no cancel. So already we've made our message box so that the user can make a decision. Let's say, do you want to continue with this operation? They can say yes, they can say no, they can hit cancel. And in a moment, I'll show you how to figure out which button they clicked and do something different based on that. Now let's say I want to change this to be, be a simple VB yes, no. Delete the cancel. Now I'll hit space. And I want to add something else. So here, not only do you choose the buttons, but you can choose some of the formatting options. To do that, you simply type a plus sign. No, and I know that I entered that correctly because now I've got the drop down of options. Let's say that this is a critically important message. Well, I can choose VB critical. Now run it. And it made an annoying little noise when it popped up to get the user's attention here. And we see a red X next to the high again. Now we have yes and no. So the user must make a decision. And you'll notice here, they cannot click the X not a possibility. So with yes and no, the X, which can also be thought of as a cancel, is no longer a viable option. So they have to click yes or no, have to make a choice. So if I go back and type cancel here, run it again, you'll see that the red X is once again clickable. So you are controlling what the user can do with this window. Now, before I move on and tell you how to figure out which button was clicked, I want to show you where to get more information about this function, particularly all of the things that you can enter here for the buttons argument. So if you go to teachxl.com, right here you've got a search box. And all you have to do, you can type message box. It'll search through all of our tutorials. And the very first one that pops up is Excel VBA message box, message box macro. Click that, and here you've got a tutorial that's going to walk you through everything. It's got a few examples for outputting the text, adding buttons, figuring out which one was clicked. Everything we're going to cover in this tutorial, as far as the message box is concerned, is covered here. But what we've got up here, it's very nice, is an explanation of the arguments. I pretty much already did that. And then, here we go, the button arguments. So everything that you can input, VBA, OK only, cancel, retry, ignore, and so on and so on, with a little explanation of what it does. So VB yes, no shows the yes and no buttons. VB critical displays the critical message icon in the message box window. That's the red X. And you can see what all the other ones do here, including default button selection. VB default button three selects the third button in the message box by default. So everything is explained here nice and easy for you, and you should use this as a reference if you're trying to make more complex message boxes because you're not going to remember everything. And then down here, it, this is what you need to know to figure out how to figure out what button was clicked. So let's go to that. Okay, so you got your message box. It's built. It's cool. It asks a user to make a decision, but now you need to figure out what you need to do. So we need to actually comment this out. This is the old guy right here. Maybe I'll just copy it and make a new one. We have to change the format of this just a tiny little bit 
in order to make it so that we can figure out what button was clicked. So we need to put a parentheses, an opening parentheses and a closing parentheses around this, just like you'd have to do for the arguments of a function within the spreadsheet. But if I leave it like this and go to the next line, it's not going to work. It gives you this error expected equal sign and you don't really know what the hell that means because it's not very descriptive. What it means is that we need to set this, we need to set a variable equal to this message box. And that's how we get the input. So let's do return value, or you could say button clicked. You can put it as whatever you want. And now the value returned by the message box, which will be what button was clicked, is going to be stored inside the return value variable. Let's quickly make this a little bit more, I don't know, important. Let's say, should we continue? Let's say you're doing a macro that searches through lots and lots of records and it takes too long. Should we continue? Yes or no. Let's just make it a yes or a no, no cancel. And I will call this important notice. Okay, now actually what I'm going to do is make a little message box to show you what would be returned from the previous message box. So let's run this, and I hit yes, and it returns a 6. Now if I run it again and click no, it returns a 7. Now you can use that to figure out which button was clicked, but let's go back to Teach Excel and show you all the options and the return options. So down here under values returned from button clicks in the message box, you've got two choices. So here we have all the buttons that could be clicked, the constants that can be returned, which I'll cover in a moment, or the returned number value. And you just saw the returned number value. For yes, you saw number six be returned, for no, you saw number seven be returned. But we can also use these constants. So the constant is just the name of the button, OK, cancel, abort, retry, ignore, yes, no, with VB in front of it. So the name is going to be a little bit easier to remember. Do I want to know if the user clicked the yes button? I do. So I should check if they clicked yes with a VB in front of it. So VB yes, VB no, VB ignore. And that way you don't have to remember these numbers. So let's go back to the VBA window. And now let's do something useful. So I'm going to comment this guy out. Maybe I'll delete him in a moment. And actually, let's put a comment up here. Get the button that was clicked. And now let's check which button was clicked. We're going to use an if statement here. I've covered that in the previous tutorial, so you should start to be a little fam more familiar with it. Starts with an if, and what do we want to check? We want to check the return value. What do we want to check? Well, I can check if it equals, let's say, 6 for yes. I'll show you that first. And then we do then, enter, do another enter and a tab. And I'll put an out a message box just to make it nice and easy. Let's say yes. Now let's do else if return value equals seven, then message box no. All right, so now we should be able to visually see exactly which button was clicked. Alt F11, Alt F8, enter. Should we continue? Yes. And yes. So our code knows that the yes button was clicked. Try it again for the other one. No and no. Perfect. So if you're not sure which value to check for which number, you can always output the return value in a message box first, 
So you don't have to waste time searching on the internet or going to teach Excel, looking it up and figuring out it should be a six or a seven. Just output that guy in a message box, figure it out, nice and simple, very visual, and then check for it down here. However, you can also do, just like I said before, VB yes. And down here we want to check for no. So what do we do? VB no. Run it again. Should we continue? Yes. And the yes pops up. No. And the no pops up. And remember, down here, you can put whatever code you want. You don't just have to put a message box. So let's just say code to run if user clicks yes button. And down here, code to run if user clicks no button. And one little tip, if they do click the no button, you might want to completely stop running the macro. So I said, if it's a search macro, do you want to continue running it? Yes. You want to stay within your macro over here and keep doing something. Otherwise, maybe you just want to kill the macro immediately. You are done. So down here, if the user clicks no, we should see the message box no. Now let's put a line above that. Just to prove that it works. Exit the macro. All we do is exit sub. So let's run it again. Should we continue? So if I click yes, we'll get another message box. Perfect. And if I click no, should get nothing. Perfect. So if you want to exit the macro, just type exit sub. I'm going to comment this out so that the message box will run by default. And now you know how to build a, not really complex, but you could call it a complex version of a message box right here. We have the text that you want to appear in the message box. You've got the title over here that will appear in the title bar. And here you've got your options that determine how many buttons will appear. If they can or can't, click cancel, which will also prevent them from clicking the red X. And it'll change a few formatting options. So we got that nice red X there and an annoying little sound when this pop-up appears. And remember, you can get all of the options along with their descriptions from Teach Excel. I'll show you that one more time quickly. So from anywhere on the site, you'll be able to see this nice little search bar up here. And if you type message box, hit enter. The first option right here, Excel VBA message box, message box macro. It's going to give you lots of examples, changing the appearance, doing something after user clicks a button, and so on and so on. And the first section, the syntax, is what is going to show you all your options. So all the options for what you can do for the buttons and the appearance and any default buttons that you want clicked. And then underneath that, the values that are returned when the user clicks a button so that you can do something based on their choice. So I highly recommend bookmarking this. It's a great resource to have, and it has a nice little sample file up here. And that's it for part one of getting user input using VBA and macros, where I showed you how to use a pop-up window, a message box, in order to solicit input. Make sure to check out part two where I show you how to use a user input that's going to allow the user to type something in, input numbers, text, or even select cells within the worksheet, and then hit a button in the pop-up window to have that data sent back to the macro. So you could think of it as kind of an expanded version of the message box. But for this tutorial, that's it, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.